Welcome to my channel folks. In today's video, we are going to see how you should set up your AWS account structure. If you are a small startup or you are starting up in your AWS environments, it is very easy to go ahead and create one account and start building your resources. But if you are working for an enterprise where there are multiple business units and multiple applications and each of those applications having different environments, then you have a big architectural decision to be made. How do you structure your accounts? Do you divide the AWS accounts based on environments or do you divide your AWS accounts based on your business units or you divide them based on your business functionality or you divide them based on the organization structure that you have? So these are some of those decisions that you need to make and I'm going to show you some of the use cases that are being used by some of the customers in in the wild and I'll also show you how an organization structure of AWS accounts looks like when you set it up based on a particular way. So let us go ahead and see that. When you are talking about AWS account structure, Amazon provides us a mechanism called as AWS organizations. It is nothing but a policy based way of managing multiple AWS accounts. You, these policies are called as service control policies or in short, they are called as SCPs. And based on that, you can say my Security auditors account should have only view or read only access for my all my other accounts or my backup account should only have access to my backup uh, agents or those resources that needs to be taken back up with or you can have a cloud formation account which is used only for deploying or creating templates and deploying those templates into other accounts. So like this you can have multiple accounts and attach policies to your accounts so that they have very fine grained control and what you can do and what you cannot do and AWS makes it very easy by using the service control policies. So how do you organize your account? You can go ahead and organize them based on business units. Say for example, you can have a business unit as HR or you can have a business unit as sales and you can have another business unit as products and each of them can be their own separate account whereas the root account will be the master account under which all these three different accounts will be created. That is one way of setting up your account. Another, another way of looking at it is based on your environments. You can group them saying all my dev environment of different applications will go into one account and then my test environment will have different applications in the test account and then there is a production account. All the different multiple applications will be sitting in there inside their own VPCs and their own subnets and everything. So that is another way of setting it up and you can combine both these things to have a different model as well. Let us go ahead and see how we can do that. So here is the most simplest way where quite often people start here where there is a single master account and all the resources are sitting inside here. The, the pros of this kind of a setup is you can have a centralized managed IT and then the governance is very easy to be done because you have only one account to govern with. But as your resources grow, as your organization matures in the AWS utilization, you will want to have multiple accounts so that you can have each business unit saying HR will have it, their own business ac account and their own policies will come into picture and their own governance will come into picture. Or sometimes each geographical unit will have its own uh, regulations. So you will want to have another account for that purposes. So this is another way where you have two master accounts and you go ahead and do that for the reasons that your organization will demand. And then you can have a single master account under which you can have multiple divisions as it is shown here. The advantage of setting up like this is once again you will have a centralized governance whereas the individual IT management will be decentralized and each of those divisions will have their own control mechanisms of how you want to do the tagging, how do you want to do the uh, EC2 scheduling or backup and all those policies or data con or content regulations or privacy regulations. So this is a single master hierarchy model as AWS calls it. You can also have a multi master hierarchical model where you can have multiple master accounts in your environment and then each of those masters will have multiple accounts and both of them are not connected at any point in time. But if you want, you can go ahead and connect them. But the idea is to have them as much isolation as possible between those multiple masters. So the pros of this kind of setup is you will have multiple autonomous governance bodies. That is each of them can have their own 
governance saying uh, some of them will be HIPAA compliant, some of them will be PCI compliant, some of them will have an ISO compliance and each can choose the compliance model they are, are finding it needed by their organization and each of those uh, accounts will have their unique ID, IT functions. Some of them might be doing a serverless architectures, some of them might be using an ES based services, some of them might be using a pass based services. So you give the complete autonomous control to each of those master accounts to do how they want to deploy their resources in AWS. So if we take these examples and put it up into an organization that you need to create in AWS, this is how it is going to look like. You go ahead and create a master account and under that master account, you will go ahead and define your service control policies of who should control what and who should have access to that. Once you define that, then you'll go ahead and create a dev organization unit. Remember, this is not an account. You're just going to create an organization unit called as dev. In other words, that is going to be a dev environment. And then you will also create another organization unit called as test. And finally, you go ahead and create another one called as prod. So once you go ahead and finish this, then you will start creating your accounts under these environments. So under dev, as you can see here, I have created two different accounts completely and each of those accounts will have some resources. So you have two under dev and then under test and prod, we have some more accounts. So a total of five different accounts has been created. And remember, you can go ahead and add any of these accounts anytime. So if you tomorrow, the test environment needs a one more account, you can go ahead and create account number six under test or if production needs a few more accounts, you can go ahead and add them as well. So once you do this, then you can have the resources under each of those accounts configured and updated in any point in time. So that is how an organization unit and then the master account should be set up for your AWS. If you have any problems in setting it up, let me know in the comment section. I'd be happy to help them with you. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.